Some more examples with rational expressions, simplifying rational expressions. Again, key concepts here are factoring, canceling, clearing, fractions, all that good stuff. So let's do some examples. First of all, I'm going to notice that this is an addition problem. So I'm not canceling anything. Usually off the bat, I'm trying to find common denominators. So first I'm going to factor the denominators here because that will help me determine what my least common denominator is. And you can see that I've got a factor of y minus 4, and then I have a factor of 10 and 6, which both share a factor of 2. It's always good to find your least common denominator. So my LCD here is going to be, I don't need, it's going to be y minus 4 times 2, and I need it. What am I missing from this? I'm missing a 3. And what am I missing from this? If I have a 2 and a y minus 4, I'm missing a 5. So in total, your LCD is 30 y minus 4. That to me is the easiest way to do it. So 30 y minus 4, let me write that up here. 30 times y minus 4. And now let me erase this because I'm going to need the room. So let's rewrite this equation. If I'm going to, what I'm going to need to multiply this first equation by on the top and the bottom is, notice what am I missing? I'm missing a 3. And on the second an equation, I'm missing a 5. So let's now rewrite my equation. The denominator is, of, of course, going to be 30 times y minus 4 because that was the least common denominator. This first term is going to be 27y, and this term, the second term, is going to be 35y. And 35 and 27 can be added together to get my final answer of 50, 60, 2y all over 30 times y minus 4, and you're still not done. Because now what can you cancel out of 60 and 30? They're, they both have a factor of 2, so that would turn into 15, and that would turn into 31, and there's your final answer. 31y all over 15 times y minus 4. Again, I always check my answer by plugging in a number. Let's plug in a number here. Let's, let's use, uh, we can't use, well, we could use 0, but it's sometimes... Um, not the best number to use. So let's use a number like 1. If I plug in 1 here and here, I'm going to get 31 all over negative 45. And if I plug in 1 all the way, everywhere here, you can do this with your calculator, but I'll do it on paper. I'm going to get 9 over negative 30 plus 7 over negative 18 and just use your calculator to punch those in and punch that in and make sure that they're equal there's no sense in spending a bunch of time checking and of course you'll check that they are the same exact same number so this answer checks out let's try another one notice this again is a subtraction problem so we need a common denominator and in this case it's a little bit easier because these can't be factored so I need to multiply this by x minus 3 over x minus 3. And I need to multiply this by x plus 5 over x plus 5. And that gives me the denominator, which is x minus 3 over x I'm sorry, x minus 3 times x plus 5 is going to be the denominator. And I'm going to have a 7 times x plus 5 minus 4 times x minus 3. Be careful with this negative sign. Make sure it goes in with the 4. So I, I like to do like that, where I change it to plus a negative 4 so that I make sure I distribute that incorrectly. So let's simplify this. That'd be 7x plus 35 minus 4x plus 12. Check that. That's where most people make mistakes. All over x minus 3x plus 5. Now I add like terms. That's 3x plus 47 all over x minus 3 x plus 5 and that's your answer again you can check it by plugging in in this case it would work fine to plug in 0 
for all of your x's in, in your answer and in your original and make sure that those are the same answer. I'll let that I'll leave that up to you to do. Let's try, check another one here. This is a multiplication problem. So when you're doing a multiplication problem, we are not finding common denominators. We are just factoring and canceling. With the multiplication problem, I like to turn this I like to turn it into one big problem like this because that's what it is. Now, I'm not distributing here because it's not there's nothing um, I don't have to distribute at this point. I'm first going to factor and I'm going to cancel. And we can factor. This one right here is a difference of perfect squares. So that's going to be factor into x minus 3. I'm sorry, y minus 3, y plus 3. This one is one of those soap problems. So this is a little bit trickier. It's going to be the same sign, opposite sign, always positive. That's, that's soap, in case you don't remember that. And what's being cubed, a y is being cubed, and a 3. So we put y and 3 there. We put y squared here, and 3 squared here, and then we put y times 3 here. And that's how you factor a sum of perfect cubes. Look that up in your book if you don't remember that. Now I'm going to cancel common factors, and I can cancel anything on the top with anything on the bottom. Notice that that's going to cancel, that's going to cancel, and we're going to be left just with y squared minus 3y plus 9 on the top and 3y on the bottom. Notice that these, the 3y and the 3y don't cancel because those are not factors of the entire numerator and denominator. So you can't just cancel a term. It's got to, you can only cancel factors of the numerator with factors of the denominator. So we're done. There's nothing more that can be done. There's your answer. Again, you can check by plugging in a number, let's say 1, and making sure that the uh, answer you get here is the same as the answer you get here to check your answer. Let's try one more. Notice this is a division problem. With division problems, it's the, similar to multiplication, except you have to flip these after you factor. So let's go ahead and factor. This is going to be x plus 5, x minus 5, difference of perfect squares. A 2 is going to come out of here. Right here, it's going to be an x plus 5 and an x plus 5. Right here, it's going to be x plus 5 and x minus 1. Let's see if that works. Yes, it does. So now we've got to flip. Before we flip, we can certainly just cancel these because those will cancel. But now let's flip them. I'll write it down here. It's going to be x plus 5 x minus 5 all over 2 times x minus 1 times, now I'm flipping these here, the x minus 1 goes to the top, the x plus 5 goes to the bottom, and now I can cancel x plus 5, x minus 1, and how nice is this? x minus 5 is left on the top, 2 is left on the bottom, there's your answer. Again, check by plugging in some numbers. One more problem. Again, notice this is a subtraction problem, so I need common denominators. The least common denominator is going to be, I'll write it here, x times x plus 3. So I'm going to multiply this by x on the top and bottom. I'm going to multiply this by, whoops, I'm going to multiply this by x plus 3 on the top and the bottom. And I'm going to get 4 times x plus 3 on the top minus 3x on the bottom. Distribute that 4 in. Simplify, that's going to be 4x, 4x minus 3x is 1x, plus the 12 when you distributed that in, all over x times x plus 3. You can't simplify that any further because there are no common factors in the numerator and the denominator, so there's your answer. All right, good luck. Again, this just takes practice. Keep practicing. Watch out for those silly common mistakes that people tend to make, and uh, good luck. See you next time.